If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this awesome episode of Mind Pump, uh, me and Adam get into Justin a little bit. <laughs> yes, we, uh, you do. You we ask him up all about uh, his uh, Star Wars religion, <laughs> I mean uh, philosophy. <laughs> Uh, then we talk I about caught that and his awesome shirt. Then we talk about cool shows that we're really into. I talk about Black Mirror on Netflix. If you like scary stuff, yeah. uh, Adam likes Genius on Nat Geo. Yes, I know we've reversed roles here. Uh, and then we talk about House of Cards. And then we get into the questions. We talk about what we think people will be struggling with awareness wise thirty years into the future. future Started out normal, future. then got weird. Then we talk about sh- uh, mixing up your rep ranges within your workout. Is that as effective as phasing your workouts? Hmm. Then we talk about UV exposure and our thoughts on that topic because, of course, we're experts uh, in the I field mean, of just, yeah, dermatology. We're going to go with it. Uh, and lastly, if Adam could go back in time, would he decide to take steroids or would he decide not to? Great episode coming up. Also, this month, actually not this whole month, it ends on the 12th, so this is a very short promotion because it's so fucking awesome. If you enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, which is one year's worth of exercise programming, it contains all of our MAPS programs, you will actually get another uh, Super Bundle for free that you can give to anybody you want. You can give it to Grandma. You can give it to friend, family Whoever members. To grandma. Or <laughs> Grandma would use it. If you're really gangster, you'll buy one and then you'll sell the other one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you should do that, actually. I don't know Doug's why giving you're me giving the dirty ideas. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? Yeah. But it's pretty awesome. So buy one, get one free. You can find this uh, on our site, mindpumpmedia.com. Oh, you got your new shirt in, I just saw. Yeah, you got a new shirt. Boom. What do you mean? What's up with that shirt? What's so big about it? What are you talking about, dude? This is like epic. It's a whole lot of epic in one shirt. It's a big Star Wars shirt, but what's special about it? I don't get it. Stop it. He just ordered it. Fuck you. Yeah, but okay, but is there something special about it besides the bag? It is special. Why? Because it is. But what does it say underneath? What's that word there? It's just Star Wars daily. I don't know. I don't really care about that. I just care about the epicness of everything that's going on. So, right Justin, here. let me ask you this. Look at this. You've got. You're obviously a big Star Wars fan. This is not a secret. No. I would even say it's borderline. It's not there, but it's borderline. <laughs> you know, I flirt with it but, and I pull pull back. Well, like I was going to say, like you might at some point need, like, let's say something bad and depressing happened to you. Mm. You would go over the line. It would become a psychological issue. Mm. But you're not there yet. You're just like you're no, there, right? You're close, even, but you're not there. Not even close. Why don't you have any tattoos of Star Wars? <sighs> He's thought about it. I know right? he has. I know he has. <laughs> He's like, yeah. that's what he thought about. Look. Yeah. Because it's too much like, that's like. It's an inner battle. Oh, I it? love this company. I'm going to put a, a company's logo on my body. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. See, but that's not the Justin that I know because the Justin I know no, I like believes art. that Star Wars is far more than just a company. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like. You know what? I struggle with it because I I do I do kind of want to have like stormtroopers and fucking Darth Vader and you know some cool shit. Would you say Star Wars, as much as it is a franchise and a big business, is a philosophy? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's it's a way of being. <laughs> That's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's, I feel like. A- I feel like you could have like a quote, like a Yoda quote or if something you, fucking epic. When somebody when somebody I don't meets put you, words on my body though. That's when somebody thing. meets you, Justin, and they and they want <clears throat> like I like I'm a 20 year old, like I'm only 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. I'm already not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> but and go I, ahead. <clears throat> and I and I don't fully understand Star Wars. I have maybe never seen any of a, uh, episodes, but I've heard great things about it. How do you describe? describe the show or describe the series to a, a mind that doesn't fully understand it like how do you like how do you sell the show how do you like prep them into it like yeah, what if, what if because I'll, t- I'll be honest as a kid well, watching it i didn't understand 
the depth of it until I got right. older. As I got older, I went like, oh shit, now I get it. There's like this there's whole myth, under- there's allegory. There's- yeah, I was too young. Yeah. I mean, God, what are we, early 80s when it yeah. first came out? So I was only, a, you know. Oh, I was, yeah, I was yeah, I like think- five years old watching it. Like, I didn't put that together. I know. I was people, only 27. People get caught up in like cheesy graphics or, yeah, yeah like, like costumes. That, and like, that, like that, that. to yeah. me as a kid, and this is also why I think some, uh, like, okay, so if you were born in the, our age, right? If you're born in our age, if you were born in the 80s, I was born in 79. And, yeah, or really old, seven, yeah, 70s. Yeah. And you, you watched them as a kid, hair. and maybe it didn't resonate with you or whatever, and then you've moved on from it, You and you talk about Star Wars, you think of it like, oh, yeah, the graphics are cheesy, oh, what I'm not into... But those that actually watched it later on and were older and understand that there's like this deep message underneath it, yeah, are, those people, I feel like, have a, a greater appreciation. So how do you explain that to somebody who doesn't understand Star Wars? I don't Wars? think you can. It's, it's oh, you they, just, they uh, find it. The force know? is not with you. Well, is that what you say? They find it if oh, they're sorry. looking for it. It's, it's <laughs> there's a lot of surface people out there, and I can identify you right away based oh, on your shit. answer. Oh shit! Oh shit! So this yeah. scene, so it feels like it's almost like you asked Justin. It's no different than if you said, Justin, can you explain God to some exactly. spirituality? And he's like, yeah. No, they have to find it. No, they, you got to find your own path. You have to find your own yeah. path. With Star Wars. <laughs> do, do the research. <laughs> Would yeah. you say that Star Wars? Besides being a major fan, like you love it, right? Yeah. Would you say that it impacted you in a way that made you live your life differently? Um, I think that don't it, fucking lie either, Justin. Well, yeah, tell us the truth in in ways, but like wow, I mean, I, I really come, well, I come that's from fucking a, powerful, dude. Well, here's the thing, dude. I come from a religious background, and, and for me, like <laughs> I like tangible things to think about, like besides just like this, like mysterious, like I'm trying to figure all this out based off of something that's like. You know, people try and describe God. People try to describe, like, you know, religion in all these ways. It's like, it's not really tangible. You and wanted something more realistic and tangible, like, well, yeah, like just, the Death Star. Yeah, just like the Death like, Star. Like, like we're a, like, overcoming something. Like a space movie about <laughs> a distant future. <laughs> you fucking guy. I can't have this conversation about with an you two. No, no, don't stop. You, I'm you a... surface bastards. <laughs> I, okay, last question, and then we'll move on. I promise, Justin. Uh, I apologize for putting you on the spot. Last fine. question. You have to answer uh, truthfully, because if you don't, then we're both going to jump you, okay? Okay. So, here's the question. Yeah. Honest. You're going to jump me? No, no, no. We're not going to jump you, bro. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Yeah. You'd you'd be pretty hard to jump anyway. Yeah, bring it. Be honest now. Mm. Have you ever watched Star Wars porn? (laughs) Oh my god! <laughs> There's your answer. Like, your hesitation. Like metal bikini. One hundred percent. We don't need to know the details. Come on, I'll go Justin. and do that. I'm not afraid. <laughs> your lightsaber, bro. You can, dude. Like Return of the Jedi. Come on, man. Like she's a slave. Like oh. <laughs> something. Something. I feel spicy like it, there. I feel like if Courtney has not dressed up as Princess Leia already, I she think she hasn't. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna. I'm oh, gonna, you're hitting the soft spot. That's he got, right. He got a little it's, upset it's, right it's, here. It's it's waiting to happen. Court, uh, <laughs> Courtney, you need to you need to step your game up on a little bit right now because what I if, know I what know if what she this would do for my man. This is a good so, birthday present right here. But oh what if she God. dressed up? What if she's like, I don't want to dress up like Princess Leia. I want to dress up like Han Solo. Wow. Would you still be aroused or would it be weird? I mean, it would be weird at first. <laughs> right. He's like, and but I would be. be <laughs> he's like, but I could get through I, that. I'm like, hmm, this is an iconic <laughs> character. I have to, I have to tackle this. Is that your blaster? I feel. <laughs> 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 just to see it. Yeah, All right, change yeah, the subject. Yeah, that's getting weird, dude. It's getting you, real weird, dude. You guys have to watch Black no. Mirror dude, on it's, Netflix. It's scary. It, I swear to God, bro, you're like over. You're such creepy. a pussy. You're gonna put that. You're gonna shout that one out. So all you guys yeah. that like uh, dark stuff or scary stuff, go watch that. I'm gonna shout out Genius on uh, Nat Geo. No, nah, it's too traumatized, mm. dude. Why? So what? It's not just too traumatized. Uh, so, traumatized. Too traumatized. You're too. So much- here's what Gen- Genius. I did. I watched the first like three episodes. Genius is the life of Einstein. Which, when I saw the description, I jizzed in my pants. I was so excited. Whoa. I was like, Oh shit! Ah, this is gonna be cool. And then I watch it, and it's a fucking dramatization. It's a, it's like a movie with actors who are pret- he's pretending to be Einstein, and it's going through his life. And I hate learning about people like that. I like to watch documentaries where they have old photos and people talking over them. The the, the boring ones. Those are the ones I like to watch. So you know what? Okay, and I don't like dramatization. And I, and, and I could somewhat agree with you here, but I'm gonna. I actually, this is funny. I like 
I like to be entertained by someone like this yeah. first. And then if I like it, what this makes me want to do now is actually go get like a book on him or then go f- search like a boring documentary because I want to be entertained. I'm sitting down to watch TV. So I'm like, part of me wants to be, inter- I don't want to be like, if I want to be l- completely learning 100%, I'm going to be d- in a book or whatever. Right. So there's a part of me that wants to be entertained visually. So I, I enjoy the, I, I, I enjoy the drama side of it. And I also take it with a grain of salt, too. So I'm not like one of those people that watches it and go like, oh, my God, did you know yeah. that this happened to Albert Einstein and he was with, you know, this was going on with Hitler and Hitler and him and like, like I because it was in a show. There's a lot of cool, like, Einstein's an interesting person to learn about. Well, it may, You know, I he know. used to bang, like, young chicks all the time. Dude, it, I'm telling you right was, now, yeah. after watching this show, I'm- Using his mind powers. I'm, like, going out, I'm searching for a book right now to read on his life because- he is uh, even more fascinating than I had already what I had already known. See, previously. here's here's what I find very. Mm. This is this is something that we tend to do um, as humans, <clears throat> is when there was an individual that's historically relevant, somebody who's like legendary historically, right? That they did something really good, like one thing or a couple things really good. <laughs> we want to know all the dirt. Well, no. What happens is we romanticize them and make them these like perfect, amazing people. Mm. I find it more fascinating to learn. About how human they were, like well, Einstein. Like I think he was this, a very flawed human being. In and some ways. I think this show does a good job of that. Yeah, it does do I that. Mean, but I'd rather def- learn it. He definitely he looks like a bad father. Mm-hmm. He looks. Like, he was definitely He's a womanizer. He had lots of women always, mm-hmm. um, and he was married to multiple. And then even though he was married, he was with younger women, like you said. Like yep. I don't. I don't think they. Nobody learns that, by the way. People, a lot of people don't know that about about Einstein. Yeah, yeah. Some of that stuff. this is some of the stuff, and that's why I thought they do a pretty good job. Now I'm sure there's things that are exaggerated. He they, talks shit about uh, qu- about quantum physics. Mm. Yeah, he basically he said it was. Really? It, yeah, he's he he basically is like doesn't make any sense, and it's not. He, he didn't he didn't really acknowledge it. Um, and then of course now later on we know how how uh, real it is. But no, he's a very interesting person. But if you really want to learn about someone that will blow your mind. And half the stuff I read about him, I'm almost like, this can't be true, is Teddy Roosevelt. You guys ever read oh, about Teddy? Oh, yeah. You know what? Like, Batman was actually based off of him. I, I heard that somewhere because he's, like, in the middle of the night, he used to, like, like go, like, fight crime and stuff on the streets. Teddy Roosevelt what? was- I swear to God. Adam. What? Adam. Yeah, dude. He would Adam. take a billy club and, like, go out and, like, Bro, read, regulate. Read about Teddy Roosevelt. Okay, if- Think He's about a the most badass. Think about the most macho, like super machismo, badass, like tough, yeah, like yeah. stereotypical dude. He's that times a million. He was giving a speech in front of a crowd, like a huge speech. Someone shot him in the fucking body, like I think in the chest, and he was wounded, bleeding. Finishes his speech, doesn't like he's like no, I'm not leaving. I'm finishing my speech right now. This is a true story. <laughs> this guy was he was Teddy Roosevelt was awesome. Riddled with uh, uh, he had asthma as a kid. He was a sickly child. Ended up getting super into fitness and exercise and judo and boxing mm-hmm. um, to make himself tough. Seeked out like the most difficult things you could seek out as a human being, just because he was a tough guy. Well, do you have a good? Uh documentary recommendation yes, or PBS book? PBS has an incredible documentary on the Roosevelt's so they talk about Teddy and then they talk about uh, uh, FDR who I'm not a big fan of hmm. but um, which one was it that was responsible for the national park system uh, there's a few of them but Teddy Roosevelt Teddy, really was right? the one that yeah. started all that okay. stuff but uh, the guy was like learn to read about him and the Rough Riders um, when he would go out and just like volunteer to go fight in these battles and then when they yeah. When they were like, no, you know, we're gonna put, we're gonna station you here, and he's like, no, I want to be in the middle of the shit, and he would disobey orders to go, yeah, dude, actually fight, and yeah, and he's a crazy dude, he's a crazy, crazy dude, and uh, he would practice judo while he was a president, judo and boxing. That's great in the in the Oval Office. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he's a pretty interesting person. Yeah. But anyway, um, what I was gonna say is Black Mirror, dude. You guys got to watch it. It's it's very it's modern day Twilight Zone in the sense that the twists in it are so good. But it's all. It seems to be centered around uh, technology. You know, it was hard for me to get past even the first one where he's like banging a, a pig. I didn't see what. Yeah. What season was that? It's like the very first episode. It must have. It's not the first. It was season. like too much for me, man. It's not like, the first Ugh. season. 
The first season is <laughs> not that. Like, <laughs> he had sex with a pig. Like they yeah. cornered, yeah, they of cornered all the some animals, politician. All the animals are going to fuck a pig? Yeah, they're just like, that's they, be, they that's forced them to do it. Otherwise, they're going to kill all these people. And he's just like in this moral dilemma. You know, should I fuck this pig in front of, you know, like a live feed from everybody? And his wife was like. This is an episode? Yeah. Wow. That's I'm Black gonna, Mirror. That's, I'm going to find that's one. That's why I was like, ah. It's and then, twisted, dude. So maybe I'll, yeah, it's very twisted. It's, I like, I like. I like this is what I like about Black Mirror. I enjoy I figure shit out too easily when I watch movies, which kind of pisses me off. Like I'll watch a movie no, and I'm then, the same way. And then I, like, I, I love twist. And then a quarter into it, I'm like, okay, here's what's happening. And then if I'm right, I get angry. But if I'm really fucking wrong, I love it. Like I love being really wrong. Like X. Uh, well, that's Mike, hard to do now. Yeah. That movie Ex the Machina trickier. or Ex Machina. I don't know yeah, how you yeah. pronounce it. Uh-huh. That one did that to me. Yeah, that was a that rad one fooled movie. the fuck out of me when I watched that one. I was guessing the whole time. So. Very good stuff. Yeah. You still haven't watched House of Cards yet, right? I've seen, Ooh. I saw about maybe eight episodes, and it's cool. Um, I could I could see how I get into it, but it's tough for me to, you know, I'm already I'm already so into politics, and and I know how twisted and shit that whole world is. That I think it's just I don't know, just like I, I want to get away from that sometimes. I don't know. Maybe I'll get back into. He it. He likes the real version. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like you. The real yeah. version's so <laughs> horrible. Isn't I it? feel yeah, like there's you plenty I, of drama there already. I feel yeah. like you would enjoy it so much because of that, and you would you would appreciate like I do the the twists that are in it too. There's now the twists. actress that plays his wife, I love her as an actress. I she's, think she's excellent. She was in Wonder Woman. She was in Wonder oh, yeah. Woman. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. the queen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, she's awesome. No, it's a. I think the actors, actors, actresses are are phenomenal in that show. Uh, I think it's got an incredible plot. Like uh, many seasons, I feel like a lot of series, they tend to really die off after a couple of seasons or it feels like they're repeating the same stuff. So <clears throat> you actually get to kind of see him work his way into the Oval Office. So, you know, mm. that I think that whole process. Oh, so he does become president. Yeah. So I think oh, okay. I think you would enjoy just that whole process of all the. Well, shit. I loved usual, usual Suspects, so I'm sure I'd love that show. Yeah, yeah it's dude, fucking one of the greatest mm, movies dude, all time, right? Right, there, for sure. Best <sighs> twist ever. Well, let's, uh, let's bring that bird on. Let's get into it. Bring her on. Wow. Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from Zach Harding. Our boy. What do you think people will be <laughs> struggling? Zach. <laughs> what Sorry. do you think people will be struggling with awareness wise 30 years from now? <laughs> oh, I think awareness wise. For sure, I think it, it is going to be uh being present. Mm. I think that listening. We are, yeah, which kind of all falls in the same yeah. category, right? Yeah. No, I really People do. I don't listen to you. I yeah. think that we are becoming so plugged in and it's really hard to disconnect. Um, and this to me, like uh, going through that book are irresistible right now. And like they dive into this, this topic. And, and I think mm. that we have no idea Facebook. I mean, th- all these things, Facebook, Snapchat, in- Instagram, all this stuff has only been around for 10 years or less. I know. I know. Is that crazy? You know, yeah. so we really have it's not really seen the the repercussions of it. Like, we don't know uh, how how bad this could get. And they're showing uh, how addictive all the... In fact, they're engineered to be very addictive. And we're seeing people with huge issues with it, with not being... I mean, they actually now have... have, have the compulsion. There's actually a... Uh, they call it... Um, fuck, what was the name? Of course. I forget the name. I just read this. Uh, basically, uh, people have separation anxiety from their phone. Mm-hmm. It's like a real, mm-hmm. uh, it's a real issue. Now. Yeah, where people have get like frantic so, and freak out yeah. and anxiety because their fo- they don't have their phone right next to them. And why I think I'm so I've passionate. I've seen this happen. Well, I've felt yeah. it myself. I know what it's like to be. Oh shit! I forgot my phone. Like, uh, like, like, yeah, panic. Like, yeah, like, why? Why is that such a big deal? Like, dude, dude when we were when we were younger, it wasn't even that long ago. Like, when someone was gone. They were gone. They're just gone. Yeah. They were out in the I'll ether. Like see you when you get back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll right. leave you a message and you'll get back to <laughs> yeah. it. Right, right. Yeah. Like so, uh, you know, I think that the biggest thing that people are going to struggle with awareness wise is being present 
and and connected to now and not being so plugged in. I mean, I I, I will debate that all day long. I can't imagine uh, anything being worse than that because that's it. That's only getting worse. I, yeah. So you know what I hate about this question? It's thirty years. Like yeah, <laughs> we have that's way. Too, we, uh, I think here's what I, here's I think what, what I'm saying is ten years. Yeah, right? Thirty I mean, years. Holy shit. Yeah. Yes. 30, here's what I think. In thirty years, uh, the yeah. our lizard overlords will yeah. have <laughs> expose themselves. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be living yeah. on the sun yeah. as slaves for. Yeah. I have no fucking. We'll I mean, have a Mars colony. Do you have either. any idea at just how different things oh will God. be in thirty? Well, years? in thirty years, yeah. what we were just Justin and I were listening to that podcast. Yeah, there's they're predicting it within that amount of time. We're gonna you, be immortal. Yeah, we'll be immortal. You yeah. won't die. Yeah. So who gives a fuck? Yeah, <laughs> you, know you can do whatever you want, right? I mean, be plugged in for twenty years, thirty years of your life, then be unplugged for a hundred years. You know what I'm I saying? Like, who knows where we're gonna be? Well, in 30, I mean, it's a long time. What's the thing is like, think about it this way. Let's let's go back thirty years. So let's go back to you know, was oh, that, yeah, go back to 1987. The changes that we've seen in the last thirty years, uh, we're gonna see way more changes, way more dramatic changes in the next 30 years because as we advance, it's compounding. it becomes, it, it advances faster and faster and faster. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, the technological changes in 30 years are fascinating as hell. What, what fascinates me more are the societal changes that we'll see in 30 years as a result of that technology. So yeah, so think about it this way, like more annoying people. Well, think about all. Think about this, like let's say in thirty years we have, uh, you know, hyper realistic robots that uh, that can converse with you and have their own intelligence. Will those self aware robots then uh, protest and want their own protections and liberties? Will they want to be recognized as citizens? Will they be able to vote? Uh, what about when people want to marry uh, robots? Because that's going to happen. Will that be the next civil rights issue? What about 30 years from now, um, people will be engineering their children uh, or you know themselves? Um, or you know, how much you know robot are you, or how much human are you? Because everybody's going to be like advancing you know their abilities by in you know incorporating all this tech and what about chips and all these things what about 3d technology where people 3d printing technology where people will print their own medications and drugs they'll be able to mm -hmm. you know what's that going to do i mean i think in i think we have no clue yeah, 30 i think years is a long you know that's a long span for how fast everything's moving i right think now. And, and here's your here's your clue by the way how fast things have changed like like adam said like uh, YouTube and Facebook and these companies that have, that are just everywhere didn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, not thirty years; they didn't exist fifteen years ago. Yeah, and and, and not only not only did they not well, exist, they weren't even a thought. And yeah. and in, within a short period of time, within a decade, yeah. not only did they come up upon the scene, they literally now rule the fucking. I just world. actually read. Uh, I was on a plane, you know, to Spokane. I read this whole article that of what um, Facebook is really like focusing on and trying to to uh innovate and and bring forth and it's all like augmented reality and so that's going to be the new cell phone the new cell phone is just going to be pop-ups mm -hmm. of of uh, items and different things that are going to go along your peripheral that you're just going to interact with and that's going to be the new thing that I, everybody does i think the big question will be 30 years from now the big 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 struggle and question will be what does it mean to be human? I think that will be the constant question we will ask ourselves. What does it mean for me to be human? Is, am I still human if I plug into you know, this reality that I escape to? Am I still human if all of my you know, natural abilities from my sight to my smell to my ability to think are augmented to the point where um, mm. I'm now superhuman? Am I still human if I can genetically engineer my baby to have the most incredible genes ever and be immune to everything, you know, to cancers and all these diseases. Like, uh, you know, can I marry a self-aware mm. robot? Like I said, is that going to even count? Like, and you guys were making fun of me for star Wars. You know what I mean? Like, this is exactly what they're talking about. Like the whole time, like there's 
oh, that's an ancient religion practice. You know, they're making fun of these guys. There's the outliers. There's going to be the outliers that like refuse to adopt yeah. all of this technology and all this advancement that we're all getting, you know, fucking crazy with. Like, why? Dude, is you, it really going to like so, make but, your, your life that much better? Or is this just a big fucking distraction that, you know, we, we're in a hustle to create for no reason? Yeah, picture this. Picture like a, like a, like a future, who knows how far in advance, be like a thousand years, something like that. Where you have this society of like engineered people and everybody's perfect and tall and nice teeth and smile or whatever. And then there's like this little isolated area where people are like, fuck all that. We want, but they're all diseased and, you know, shorter and uglier and they're all kind of, you know, and they kind of show the disparity between the perfectly engineered people and the ones yeah. that refuse everything and want to live like, well, like I think, all gangly teeth. Yeah. Well, I think Matrix <laughs> hit it best when they said that they tried that and it didn't work, right? Like, I feel yes. like. We, if we had this like perfect world that yeah. we would be eventually we'd be just as unhappy well did you that's know what happened to us utopian yeah it just yep. doesn't uh, register for i us. i think we're going to reach a point where we will have solved uh most major physical biological ailment but we will be uh tackling psychological issues psychological issues will be the illnesses that we will have issues with for example did you guys know that anxiety now is the leading psychological disorder now is, is actually one of the top if not the top psychological disorder it was it has it's never been the number one but now i believe it has I actually read an article mm. um you know we have more things at our disposal and way less actual way less things to stress about real things to stress about and what i mean by that is things that will actually kill us than we ever have and yet people are more anxious than ever who knows what that's going to look like 30 years from now i think uh, 30 years from now, it's going to be uh, like, I think like what, what you're saying, Adam, um, is a very, very, uh, I think that's a very smart prediction. I mean, I, I would bet on that. I don't know, but I would bet that in the future, you know, people are going to spend a lot of time and money on like getting away from everything because yeah. they're going to have to, yeah. to to figure out. Well, you know, we already see it, right? We, we've, we've talked about this on the show multiple times. You see the rise in these practices that have been around forever like float tanks have been around since the fucking like 60s and 70s like it's not a new thing but like all of a sudden you're hearing about it all the time now because of that like all these day spas and meditation and, and yogas on the road all these businesses that have been around for a very long time they're i feel like they're more needed now than they ever were mm -hmm. right like because of because we've gotten so extreme with being plugged in and and disconnected and not present doing things that are that help us be mindful and present and slow our life down because we've gotten so fast right yeah what scares me is the the ease at which people voluntarily give up their autonomy and freedoms because they like things a lot and you know like for example mm -hmm. you know like social media and you know they give out all this information about themselves and they give these people all this control and this power and it's all voluntarily like they just they don't care like you know they don't mind um that kind of worries me a little bit it worries yeah, well, it's me that it's easy people to fall into the to the group mind you know and to the group activity like fear of missing out and uh i am always like like evaluating that like where am i getting uh my ideas from and if it's from this like collective uh especially with social media it gets crazy cuz everybody like um, they fall into a train of thought and it's, it's like, where did I, why am I even like thinking like this? It's like, everybody's preaching this one thing and, and not evaluating it like specifically. It's well, like, let me ask you guys this. Do you think people are easily manipulated by like <laughs> fear and sex and desire? Of course, okay. of course. Yeah. So now picture this, right? And I'm talking about just today, forget 30 years from now, just right now, the amount of information that Google and Facebook have together on people in depth is we've never had this ever. We've never experienced this, something like this. Like Facebook and Google, if you combine their information, they know so much about you, about what you like, what you desire, what you want, what you're afraid of, uh, your habits, where you shop, what you do, the mm -hmm. pictures you like, the articles you read, how long you read them. You know, they have so much information on you. It's incredible. It's more information that we could process, I think, currently with our current technology. But now imagine some tyrannical, I don't know, government or something decides we need all this information. We need to compile all this information because we want to, you know, we're scared of terrorists or we're scared of a, you know, maybe there was a big uh, cyber attack and everybody's bank accounts were wiped out and now everybody's freaked out and they're like, here, please, please protect us. So now the government or some tyrannical organization has all this information. Fuck. Like they could, they could really 
manipulate the populace. Politicians have been manipulating people forever by scaring us. Well, Jesus, man, if they had this information, like oh, there's yeah. no chance. We have no do. chance. <laughs> We'd have no chance. You know they already Like do. people would walk around yeah. believing whatever they wanted to, the, you know, them to believe in. It Dude, wouldn't my, be hard. Like there's software that already is is very similar to Minority Report. It's all based off of algorithms, and they've already implemented it into like different cities as trials to predict crime and hot spots, and and it's very accurate. It's very accurate. It's crazy, man. I mean, we we're, we're living in a time that's just like it. It it re- really is like science fiction if you like like compartmentalize all these mm-hmm. different things that are happening at once. So. Well, I feel like a lot of those those science fiction type movies. I mean, they take a little bit of of truth and they then they expand on it and i and I, a lot of times what makes them really good is yeah. they they're very believable right yeah. like you you watch like a minority report and you and you back the, and i remember when that movie came out it's like fuck i could kind of see you kind of see it how's like yeah, I could, interacting I, with it all like in a, in a in a way where they're gesturing with their hands they have that technology like it, what's cool about science fiction this is why i've always been into it it's because it's stretching uh, you know, the thought process with science. And so it, it, it actually like it, a lot of times science like looks at that and like, oh, wow, maybe we can build that. And they've actually tried and they, they've tried to build like a lightsaber. And like some people mm-hmm. have like actually come up with these like crazy, like it, it looks, you know, somewhat. Well, sci-fi is always, sci-fi has actually done a fantastic d- job of predicting, uh, future, um, inventions and, and events. Uh, mm-hmm. a lot of sci-fi writers are, Science nerds who then use yeah, they what they use know their about mind science to expand on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they think about what things are going to look. Oh, it's like just like what we're doing right now by speculating where we think the thirty. 30- yeah. I mean, our speculation isn't just us randomly. It's like what we've seen, right? Yeah, over you the, see last- the patterns and wow, where where could this lead us? Well, yeah. you do know that most sci like science predictors or futurists that they'll call themselves predict that phones we won't even be using cell phones in in like ten years. Like they say that the era of the cell phone. Will be over and we'll be into something else. Oh yeah, which no, I can't I've, even imagine. It'll be I've, in your eye. I've re- yeah, I've read almost everywhere that, or not everywhere, but a lot of places that we're hardware will be dead. Yeah. Like it, hardware will be any like phone, TVs, things like that yeah. that are actually like like I the said, it's the cable boxes, all those things like reality, that. Like yeah. all these, all the hardware is going to be done. Like everything will just be. You know, I'll be able to say like, oh, play, yeah. you know, We're House of Cards. two environments. And, you know. There's two environments. There's the physical environment and then there's the digital environment. And so like you're going to interact with both at the same time. Mm. And so it's, it's going to be a matter of distinguishing between the two and then like shutting one off and like being present in the other. That's going to be like a really hard space for people. Well, to deal I with. think fitness will look, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the, the current rate or of, of change and some of the, some of the things that they're discovering now with biology. I think fitness will look very different. I think mm-hmm. in 30 years, they're going to figure out ways to give people, to, to trigger adaptation responses in people's bodies without having to move and exercise and do it the hard way. Yes. I really fucking do. Annoying. And, and, and could, why? Because there's a lot of money in that. Like if somebody invented a therapy or a pill that you could take or do that then triggers the cast, whatever that, you know, because we still haven't really identified how to do it, but mm-hmm. once they can identify and trigger it, like, who wouldn't do that? Who wouldn't take a pill? Oh, I, I, and, oh this is my this is my workout for the day, and then I, I think, their body adapts, like, if yeah. they just did. Oh, I think you're right, but I also think that there'll still be a There'll lo- be weakness there, though. Yes, because it, you, yeah, just, you the, didn't have the to lo- overcome anything. Yes, I was just going to say, mm-hmm. the loss of, uh, or the lack of character built because of that, I think that that's where you'll create two different cultures, right? You'll have this culture of, like, Take whatever it, you know. Take the pill. Take what, the easy route, or the people that choose to go the old school, rougher route because they realize what that does for their character. You learn. That'll yeah. be the yeah. small minority. It will be. Well, I mean, when Those you look at it right Jedi's, now, man, it's we're the small Tell minority, me. anyways. Yeah. Well, right now, the people that actually do the work in our fitness people right now, I think those a lot of those people, like probably a lot of our listeners. I think are I like to think are self aware type people that would be those people that choose that. Sure, there might be a good portion of them also that would take the pill and take the easy route. But I think a lot of people would reckon are smart enough to recognize that and that are in health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Now it, what it would do is, and you get, would it be a bad thing? Would it help all the other, the rest, the other 80% of the population? I think it would be good. Yeah. I I honestly, I would not, I would not argue against it. I mean, of course I'd be, you know, I'm old school, right? So I'd be like, yeah, I mean, I used to do it the old fashioned way, (laughs) but I mean, I wouldn't be able to argue with it because if it was exactly like exercise, of course, I'm speculating here, but it created all those adaptations. Well, well now you're solving 
all this disease, obesity. Right, right. People well, no, feel had, good. They look good. The hormones are good. Like, yeah, you'll have that, and then you have exosuits, and you'll have all this like crazy stuff where you just you're gonna have abilities you've never had before. So it's gonna be it's gonna get weird, dude. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys. Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. <laughs> SR Arts, what are your thoughts of mixing up rep ranges within a, a workout? Okay, so the examples he gave was like if you did squats for five reps, for like five reps, and then, and then you do 10, and then, and then you then did you like seven, you did chest, and you did like, you know, 15 reps for chest, and you know, you mixed it up throughout the whole workout. There's some benefit to this, but there's also some detriment. And mm. the reason why, so for those of you who are listening who have maps, uh, any of our MAPS programs, you'll know that we, we phase workouts in two to four week phases. And within those two to f- four week phases, the rep ranges are very similar. And uh, now some people, when they design a program, they vary the rep ranges much sooner than that. So it's like one workout is one rep range, the next very next or workout. Or their entire philosophy is about you know, varying confusion everything. and varying everything. Right. Yeah. Now, the reason why we... And, and the <clears throat> variation is important, of course. You, you want to change the adaptation signal you're sending because your body uh, will adapt to each one. And if you just stick to one, your body stops adapting and it stops progressing. But the reason why we don't necessarily adhere to this constant variation all the time, or at least doing it on a regular basis, is because there's a few different reasons. One, uh, you're not express, you're not getting the full expression of the adaptation of that new stimulus. And what I mean by that is the very first workout you do in a low rep range, for example, or the first couple workouts you do, your body is really starting to get into how it can adapt with that. And by the time you get to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth workout, your body's really getting adapted to that new rep range and you're getting all these crazy results. It doesn't happen the first or second workout. It kind of gets the ball rolling. By the second or third week, you've kind of hit this peak and you start to dip a little bit and that's when you switch to a new adaptation. So really it's like, it would be like me having someone squat one workout and leg extension of the workout and lunge into the workout. Like we're not maximizing what we can get out of every exercise because we change too quickly in our opinion. So... Now, that being said, are there benefits to doing some of this? I think there's some hypertrophy benefits to doing it every once in a while, especially within the same body part. So, you know, I might do, if I'm doing chest in a workout and I'm doing heavy bench press and I'm doing, you know, one to three reps, but then the next exercise, I'm doing the higher reps and squeezing. And then the third exercise, I'm trying to get a good pump. Every once in a while, throwing it in like that uh, may have some hypertrophy benefits. So I could see mixing it up every once in a while like that. But so I have a. I have a, I have a, this happens to me every now and then. And this just happened to me the other day. And I follow a, a, you know, very similar protocol to our maps, right? With a mod, I modify exercises and, and combine a little bit of green with black. And so, but for the most part, I follow the, our principles, which what Sal was talking about as far as phasing in and out of rep ranges. But where I do make an exception, to the rule is like this. So just uh, two days ago, I came into my training session and I felt uh, more sore. Like I, my, my chest was really sore and I, I had chest work to do that day. And so when I got and I was and I was supposed to be working in phase one of our maps black, which is strength based. So I'm like five repetitions, like the low rep range. And because I felt like I had done uh, a lot of damage that I was still sore and recovering on my chest. When I got to my chest exercise, instead of following my five rep protocol, I chose a lighter weight and did high repetitions and just kind of got a pump because I felt like I had uh, already done enough damage on my body that my body was still trying to repair from that I would move over into the hypertrophy side of it and work on the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and the pump and get the benefits and from that versus doing more damage to an area that is still trying to recover. 
So this is a way that you, I might do this every now and then is if I'm working, if I'm in, and even if you're not following maps, if you're following like a strength based protocol where it's five reps, but then you're on a certain body part that is just feels taxed from the last time that you did it. I might lower, and and that's a lot of that's for one. I've got damage I've already done. Two, safety, like and then and my joints. Like if you're already achy and sore in that area, and you're hitting it again, like you could do that. But then I'm also putting myself at a higher risk. I'm probably not going to be very strong because I'm still trying to recover. I already have some damage done that my body is obviously still trying to repair. So hey, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go light. This is also too where I'm I incorporate other types of. Uh, like this, I might do some tension work or I might do like really slow, concentrated stuff with isolation stuff. So this is where I, I, I always encourage um, flexibility in and modifying our programs. It's like, here's your foundation. Here's how you should phase in and out of stuff. But then there are always exceptions to the rule where you might, might make these minor adjustments. And that's an example of how I might actually do something like this where I have a different rep range. Do you guys ever do something like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's where I'll use like focus session type stuff or trigger mm -hmm. session type stuff. I mean, if you've been working out for a while, you should have the ability to uh, modify and, you know, individualize your sessions. Yeah. I think it's important to add these kind of variables, you know, every now and then and and to introduce your body to a new stimulus. And, and so that's how I would see something like this being appropriate. But yeah, for the most part, you want to have a solid baseline. So you can go back to that and kind of uh, reference and see like how, um, you know, how all this played out specifically because you, you, you kept it all consistent. Mm -hmm. And so consistency is definitely something that, you know, we stress you have to have that knowledge base first in order to flirt with these types of, uh, uh methods. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're, you're playing a guessing game on yeah. which one of those you got the biggest bang. That's for another buck. part of it. Like you don't know <clears throat> which one is, it's like taking a shit ton of supplements all at one time. Yeah. You don't know which one's doing what, and it's hard for you to, well, to really get good strength, at one of them. Yeah, if your goal is strength, you don't want to just like throw in a ton of reps like in between your strength move, you know, because now your body's like trying to figure out, well, I need endurance and I need to overcome this. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you're, you're just like muddying the waters at that point. And I would argue, I mean, uh, in our experience, if you took two, if you took two groups of people and trained them over a 12 week period and one group you had them do you know, three week phases where three weeks at a time, they focus on a particular rep range, a particular style of training for a particular type of adaptation. And then the other group, you just took all the forms of exercise adaptation you want and mixed them up all the time. Uh, I would bet you that the vast majority of, of people uh, or, or people that you put through this type of comparison will do far better where they're phasing their workouts. I've seen it firsthand with clients. It's always worked better. The, the body tends to adapt better when you give it very specific protocol versus throwing a lot of things at it, and then you kind of get a little bit of everything and sometimes none of all of them. Um, and the other thing, too, is people have a higher tendency to overdo shit when they're mixing stuff up all the time. Again, because mm -hmm. it's hard to measure yeah. you know, which, which one you're overdoing and how much of each you need to do. I also want to point out that I think that we're kind of splitting hairs when we get into topics like this, too, though, because something that we haven't said in a long time that we've I know we've said on the show before is that you know, it. people have done this now. Now, MAPS is big now. We've got a ton of people that have ran through the program, a ton of great results. <clears throat> and we've had a lot of people that have done lots of other programs from very credible uh, trainers or fitness minds out there. And they, they want to compare like, well, so-and-so's program yeah. has this protocol right. and you guys have this protocol. Which one is better? Well, you know, getting into topics like that, especially if you uh, if you compared like, and let's take someone like a, a Ben Pikulski, a, a respected person in, in the industry that we know understands programming really well, right? So someone like that guy, and you compare his programming to like how Maps is, and maybe there's some variances there, there's some differences between the programs. You, you know, which one is better than the other? Well, at the end of the day, it a, an inferior program done consistently is better than a the best program in the world done inconsistently. So, and we've said this before that, you know, that, that trumps everything, being consistent and following through on, on your programming and staying on it is going to show you more results in your body than anything else. Now, once you've built that consistency down, then learning how to phase and focus on certain adaptations and phase in and out, whether you phase in and out how maps does it at three weeks or four or five weeks, because somebody else's protocol stretches you a little bit longer or maybe a little shorter at mm -hmm. two weeks. Like you're really, you're really starting to split hairs on 
which is which is better than the other or is one wrong or one right and this is really like why we tell people like when you go through maps it isn't just a program follow this program it's the best program for you no it's really designed to teach you how to program yourself and get some of the 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 big rules like as far as like we talk about like phasing adaptations out and understanding the difference between rep ranges and focusing on strength focusing on hypertrophy once you understand those principles you can take what you've learned from going through maps and you can start to play with little things like this where you hey i'm going to throw in a high rep in in this day with my legs and that's just you know and see how the body responds maybe it responds really well for you maybe it doesn't you know but I think that's the main takeaway is that, you know, being consistent about your programming is by far more important. Next up is Johnny Dumbbells. Hey, <laughs> good old Johnny Dumbbells, eh? <laughs> hey, what are your thoughts on the sun and UV exposure? Ooh, great topic. He's a good kid. This is a, exactly. This is a good topic. So uh, the common, um, I guess, common knowledge amongst uh, in Western medicine is that any type of adaptation that your skin has to the sun is damage, and all damage is bad. Therefore, you want to minimize mm. any type of tanning that your body may have. Didn't you get on a get into a little friendly debate on our forum about this? I had a discussion. We actually have a very we have Ooh, a the great dermatologist. Right? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. And very intelligent woman. We had a nice discussion about this on the forum. Um, and you know that's the that's the current uh, belief. Now, here's my problem with that. My problem is, first off, there's lots of studies showing that people who get lots of sun exposure have lower overall mortality versus people who don't have lots of sun exposure. There's also an epidemic of low vitamin D levels uh, in people that, uh, you know, now when you go to the doctor, a lot of doctors actually test your vitamin D levels and they're finding lots of people have low vitamin D. Vitamin D acts like a hormone in the body. So it can actually be considered a hormone um, mm. in some cases. And low D levels are strongly, strongly connected to higher cancer rates across the board. So, uh, so there's that. But besides the D, besides vitamin D, there's other, lots of other benefits that you get from the sun. My argument is this. Humans evolved being in the sun a lot. All of us. Even people who evolved in the northern latitudes – you know, you've got people that are super white like Justin. Hey, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> clear. You it's guys, true. they still, your ancestors still got more sun than the average uh, person today who is in, indoors all the time and who is on their computer all the time. So our bodies evolved with a lot of sun exposure or more so than, than a lot of us get now. And uh, that right there tells me that, that there's some benefit to getting sunlight. I think we've taken some truth, which is if you get sunburns, if you damage your skin a lot, you're going to increase your risk of skin cancer. We've taken that. We've gone so far the other direction and said, don't go out in the sun. And if you do, mm -hmm. put all this sunscreen on your body all the time to protect yourself um, from the sun. And again, sunscreen, for example, most sunscreens are these chemical-based sunscreens. And now we're finding that uh, they have hormonal effects in people because they're like xenoestrogens. They attached to estrogen receptors, you know, very weakly, but they express themselves. And so then you get these interesting long-term potential effects. Yeah. I, I say go out and get, get sunlight. Don't get burned. Um, it, that's very individual. It's yeah, different you from person to person. You got to figure that out for yourself. For it's sure. very different from person to person, but it's crazy to me that we tell people to avoid this. I think it's because we're so not used to the sun that now if you get the average person they're like oh i heard on mind pump that the sun is good and they go out and they get sunburn yeah. because they're so <laughs> they go you know, all in they go all in and, yeah. they're, and they're, they're, yeah, you they're, have to introduce it slowly especially i mean yeah i'm definitely the perfect example for that like i have to like figure out like you, you can feel it and you can feel like when the sun's really been affecting your skin and then okay i should probably go hang out in the shade or put some you know put a shirt on or whatever but yeah, you want to you want to do it minimum doses, and then um, I mean that just just from just from uh, uh, you know talking to Mercola, it's it's got me really thinking about getting you know trying actively to actually get more exposure to the sun and 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 try and get vitamin D source more from that than just like a supplementing it. So well, um, when they do, there's certain population studies they'll do where there'll be like a society that adopts these policies of using lots of sunscreen. And they'll, they'll check them out long term. And skin cancer rates sometimes don't even go down. The deadliest form of skin cancer rates, melanoma, are actually 
uh, lower melanoma rates in people who get lots of sun. Um, and if they do see a small uh, drop in skin cancer, they see a rise that over that overpowers that and just overall mortality. Mm-hmm. Plus, you want to think about this. This is something that we that we're starting to talk about a little bit in health and in medicine, and that's that you can you can your body can kind of be in this pro cancer state to where normal things can cause cancer versus when you're in this not this this anti pro cancer state to where normal things don't cause cancer. So, in other words, if I'm unhealthy. You know, I eat lots of, you know, I, I overeat food, lots of processed foods, carbohydrates, hormones are off. So I'm in this, I smoke cigarettes. So I'm in this kind of pro-cancer state. And then I get lots of sun. Mm-hmm. Now it becomes a big right. skin cancer risk versus someone who's in a very healthy anti-cancer state. Maybe someone who knows how to fast properly, who eats mm-hmm. a proper diet, moves right, is not exposed to lots of environmental toxins and chemicals. And they get sunlight. Now they get lots of benefit and not not any negative. So I think context is very important mm-hmm. in in uh, this type of situation. And I really hate it when we look at things and we're so simplistic with them. Like we say, okay, yeah, sunlight creates this damage. This damage creates these mutations, and then they make this connection and say you're going to get higher rates of cancer. Well, if you there's did a the, problem. If with you that. did that with exercise, it would yeah. be treated. No one would do it. Nobody, right? If you actually took what extra what exercise looks like, then and acutely that it looks it causes cancer, causes death. Right. So I think that I think that's the takeaway from it. And basically, what, I, what I've always done with clients is be mindful about this. Um, where I where I saw issues was especially like I felt like in the late eighties, early nineties, there was like this, you know, everybody was like just out in the sun as much as they could. You know, I remember, I remember going through high school and like girls on the weekend, as soon as that, as soon as the heat came out, right. As soon as it started hitting 80 degrees, Mm. you know, the girls, you know, in high school would all, you know, let's come and lay out, lay out, lay out. It was like lay out all weekend, you know, on Saturday and Sunday, lay in the sun for eight hours. So they get this barbecue. So yeah. So they get this. Now I think if you are aggressively going, getting out in the sun, like you are putting yourself at higher risk and those people should be protecting themselves with some sort of uh you know sunscreen and i know they they make they make some that are good i know that all of them yeah are, they make are, the, they make um like you know, zinc oxide yeah uh, i know that i think uh brand i think i've seen bullfrog and some other brands that have done some really good good ones that are, are like better ones better for you than some of these other ones that you're talking about sal yeah. so i i normally tell someone and if you're maybe you're in a job that forces you to be in the sun all the time that to right. protect yourself you know well, it's like, important to say that yeah because it's like I honestly, if I know that I'm going to be out on the lake or I'm going to be somewhere like I'm, I'm lathering up, man. I don't, you know, risk versus reward. I'm going to, you know, I don't want to get all like burned and blistered. And so it's like, yeah, of course I'm going to put sunscreen on. Um, but I'm also trying to pursue like whatever the minimum effective dose of sunlight I get, you know, consistently, uh, I'm actually pursuing that because it's healthy for me. Yeah. And it, sunscreens, that's a great topic. Like I see people like just slather on their little babies, you know, just tons of these chemical-based sunscreens. Mm-hmm. And these chemicals uh, have been shown to have zen- these estrogenic effects um, where they can, they're like hormone disruptors. Now it's very, very mild, super, super mild, but you put it on a developing child and you put it on them all the time. And you may cause uh, some problems, but I can't stress this enough. I really think context and the environment your body is in internally makes a big difference. Like I would love to see a study of people who got lots of sunlight, who were also very healthy, who ate a certain diet, who you know had lots of healthy fats in their diet, who exercised right and did all those things. What their risk would be skin cancer wise versus other people who are very unhealthy who also got sunlight. Yeah. That has to make a fucking difference. That has to make a big difference. And again, if you if you just look at like, you know, I had this conversation with other people about um, like cooking food over a fire. Like, well, did you know that when you barbecue meat, or it yeah. creates all these carcinogens? Well, yeah, it does. But since the discovery of fire, that's how we've cooked shit. Like we didn't have, like right. we didn't cook things other, any other way. And so it makes me think that that's it's not that simple. It just doesn't work no, as simplistic as now that. You're, it's like bacteria versus carcinogens. You know, it's like exactly what? so bacteria causes. You can make an argument for it being more raw. Hey, I let's just look down the past. Let's look at the past of our our medical history. Right, we discovered germs. 
we discovered that bacteria causes illness. So what did we do? We killed all of it. Everything. Antibiotics. Oh, my God. Yeah, antibiotic really soaps. Uh, everything's super sterile, super clean, because we now discovered that bacteria cause a disease. And now what is happening? Now we're getting disease as a result of lack of bacteria. We went too right. fucking far. We didn't get the hormetic effect of you know being introduced to it at you know, small doses. We went too far. We do this with everything. And I see I, I, the advice I hear people get with the sun, it sounds extreme. It sounds crazy to me. We're humans. Yeah. We evolved out in the sun. We evolved on the fucking, you know, the, the savannas of Africa or in the Middle East in the sun. And you're trying to tell me that you need to stay away from the sun as much as possible. Just get 10 to 15 minutes of exposure a day. That's all you need. Yeah. Like what human, before we had all this modern you know, lifestyle, what human got 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight? Like you didn't do that. You were out in the sun most of the time. Right, right. And then when it got dark, there was no sun. Yeah, so your body adapted. Yeah. This, so that's that's my opinion. But I'm not a dermatologist, so don't blame it on me if something happens. Just throw that last bit disclaimer in there. there. I got to make sure I say that <laughs> shit. Before. Yeah, good protection. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next question is from Devin Shredderson. If you could go back in time, would you do steroids again? Hey, I'm assuming that's geared. Is that, is that was it geared towards me there? Mm. Well, you know, I could answer too because I did the whole pro hormone, you know, designer steroid thing. I really still kind of want to do it, so I'm. <laughs> what a good question! Um, it is right. Like, how a, different would you be, and what would that? Yeah, and it, first off, I start by saying that I'm not one. I'm not big on regrets. Like, I believe, uh, I believe a lot of things happen for. I believe everything happens for a reason, and I believe that um, it's like you wouldn't be who you are. Today. Exactly, it wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't provide me uh, the passion I have about it now, talking on this show. And I, I believe that's a, a piece of uh, what contributes to this show is that I've been there. I've done that. Um, I've got the the bad story of you know I took too much of it now I have to take it in order to be fucking normal so I feel like um, and also I'm, I was a knowledgeable trainer who even took it so I felt like I I am somebody who should have known better and yet it still affected me this way so but that being said because it's hormonally changed me forever there there is a little bit of regret there you know I wish that I wish I would have known. Uh, that it was going to affect me this way. I wish I uh, would have foreseen that. Um, the shitty part is, though, again, that I wouldn't be who I am today. So, um, and would I, I don't think I would have done them uh, at 20 something if I could go back, do it all over again. But I, I definitely think that I, at, into my 30s, I would have dabbled in it for sure. I now, think. Now, uh, do you think if you could have all the growth? like the personal growth you got from it, uh, you know, all the challenges you had to go through. If you could keep all of that, but just like snap your fingers and be like, I never took it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know this is a super highly unlikely, you know, obviously impossible situation, but at then w would you, do you think you would have? Yeah, no, I didn't for sure. Because that was part of that was I needed to go, I needed to, I needed to find that answer out for myself, mm -hmm. right? Because at, at, at that point, before I had made that decision to try and do steroids, I had thought, and I said this on a recent podcast, that I really, truly believed deep down that the only thing that separated me from the covers of those magazines were that they were on anabolics and I wasn't. I really believe that. I, I truly, truly believe that. Um, that I ate really well. I believe that up until not that long ago. Right, and and I think that this is uh, why too. Like I speak so passionately to people that are interested in it and wanting to try them. Is that you know? Listen, I know you think that it's going to be like this, but it, it it's not what you think it is. Um, and if you haven't proved to yourself that you can diet and get yourself in, uh, you know, 
six to seven percent body fat naturally you don't want to do that stuff it's just it's like being a race car driver and just learning how to drive this car and like all of a sudden being like here's an extra 100 horsepower and some nitrous go have some fun and you're like just learning how to drive it's it's a it's a waste and it's and it's probably going to do more harm than it's going to do good now extra 100 horsepower and a nitrous in your car absolutely when you're on the competitive level is going to give you an advantage of beating the other race cars. But if you can't drive that car very well and you go and you enhance it, there's a better, there's, it's more likely you're going to crash or blow the engine up or, you know, do more harm than good to the vehicle because you're, you don't really, you think you're a good driver, but you're not that good of a driver yet. That's how I feel about my body. And, and I thought I was a better driver and I, and I didn't realize I wasn't until after I made that choice and realized, oh shit, it didn't just make me look like the cover of the magazine. So I get there's something else I'm missing and I'm not doing right. I see a lot of uh, when you know because obviously I've been in gyms for so for a long time, twenty years, and what I've seen steroids do to people is uh, prevent them from learning yeah. how to train themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in reinforced bad um, habits and behaviors when it comes to nutrition and training, because the steroids will do the work for people sometimes. And you know, if you're a guy in the gym and you're getting a pump every workout and you feel like you're growing or whatever, it, you're thinking like, "Well, my workout's going great, and my diet of you know bulking you know cheeseburgers and French fries all the time is working fine." And they don't learn their body and. Uh, then later on when they go off of them, they just they either stop working out completely. I know a lot of people who use a lot of steroids in their 20s mm-hmm. who stopped and not only stopped using steroids, they stopped working out. Well, where do like, you they get don't the motivation? Yeah, it's like it, 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 when it comes to you and you're, you're using like steroids and and you're not really like, yeah, trying to advance your training techniques or anything. It's like, man, that's going to be hard to, to re-motivate yourself to get back it's, in. And, especially if you don't even know. You don't yeah. even know how to train your body. Like you're doing the same routine and the same types of training that you did before, but you're not only seeing no results, you're seeing negative results. And so now it's all about the steroids and the attitude becomes, why am I wasting my time? Or Mm. this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so I've seen a lot of that. And then the other thing I've seen a lot of, just to be frank and honest, the biggest side effect I've seen besides, you know, hormonal disruptions. And I know, I knew a couple guys that had to get gynecomastia surgery actually have breast tissue removed Mm -hmm. uh from underneath their nipple because of anabolics but the biggest side effect i've seen and this is not a good one it's a nasty one are abscesses and you know infections from the injection sites and i know a guy that had to have a chunk not a little piece like a chunk of his ass cheek removed because it went he had an infection that turned into like dead tissue then they had to go in and cut it out um, and you know, you gotta, you gotta think about it this way. Like you're injecting something that was made and mixed, uh, on the black market. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very few. I'd say probably I would guess less than 1%. And the reason why I say less than 1% because I, I can count on one finger the amount of <laughs> times, <finger>. literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can count like what I think one time uh, where I, like I, I used to be surrounded by steroids, right? I had trainers working for me. I'd see them all the time. I'd want to look at them and whatever. I can count one time where I saw actual pharmaceutical grade. Oh, this is a, this is farm. This is pharmaceutical grade yeah. steroids. It was always yeah. all it's always black market. The best that you could get is veterinary grade, which still isn't that fucking awesome. And it's usually, especially nowadays, it's what they'll do is they'll get bulk powder from China. Some dude mixes it hmm. at home and then he prints his own label and sticks it on the bottle and then you take it and it's, you don't know how clean it yeah. is. You don't know what's in it and you're injecting that into your muscle. And so you get a lot. It's very, I'll tell you what right now, if you do a few cycles of steroids, the odds that you'll get an infection or you'll have to deal with what they'll call like, what do they call it? Like steroid fever or, you know, where they do it. And test flu. Test flu or whatever. That's an infection, dude. It ain't normal. Yeah. But they joke around it. They joke around about it like it's normal. Like, yeah. oh, I got test flu from my test, but then it goes away after a couple of days. Your body's fighting an infection. Yeah, yeah. 
that you're doing your body so that's the biggest fear on i would that have. it seemed it seems like the best place to go you know go is is dubai from what it, we've heard of speculation wise you know in terms of quality and whatnot like they're, they're just thinking, getting the yeah, prescription getting the, the, well yeah, you can i mean high quality stuff it's, you can do that here too yeah we could have a really good connection what's yeah. really i mean it's if i could go back in like the perfect world right and, and let's say i'm going i'm going to do them still right is I learned, like you said, had all the growth through my 20s um, and understood all that and without doing them and then actually introduced them into my life into my 30s when actually my normal testosterone levels are starting to dip naturally. Like I think to have learned all the programming, training, dieting, uh, got all that under my underneath me and all the years too, because that, that's what matters. Muscle maturity is a big deal too. I didn't even think about that. Mm. And how important that is like you and, and and we all know this look right i can tell like a, a boy's body versus a man's body like you can just see uh somebody who has time under the iron somebody who has been lifting weights for 10 plus it just years. looks different they look hard the muscles look harder they look more yes, separated yes versus kind of it's, like a, you see this especially on women women in particular you see like like you know a 20 something year old get really ripped and muscular they don't have nearly the same amount of muscle maturity as a you know thirty five year old woman who does the same thing. Right, right. Yeah. So I I think uh, again another another waste of it by doing it in my early twenties. My body is still growing and developing, and I'm still turning into a man completely. I mean, really, men don't really stop till like twenty five years old. So a lot of my body was still developing, and I was at the peak of testosterone levels. Like there was no reason for me to really to really take it. Then I didn't get the real benefits of it. When I'd get lots of benefits from it is now into my you know mid thirties when you know what that's about the time when men's testosterone naturally starts to dip from what they were in their seventeen to twenty five range. Then introducing something like t- t- uh, you know synthetic testosterone. Oh man, I mean that would have been amazing. And my body would have responded differently. I'd be able to still take in a, a very low minimal dose and probably feel in, incredible off of it from all the years of doing it correct. So instead now, like what uh, a normal person would, if someone was trying to do a cycle. So like for me, like bumping to 250 milligrams of testosterone in a week, isn't like a huge thing to me. Like, cause half of that just gets me back up to normal. So it's not like a huge bump. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel, um, you know, like I, th- this topic, tend, you know, I, I get conflicted because I think everybody should be able to do whatever they want. But when I, whenever, whenever somebody asks me if they should, my advice is always like, usually it's no. Like yeah. I don't think you should. I, I, it's, I mean, if you're here's the thing, if you're an athlete and you're getting paid lots of money and your livelihood depends on your performance. Oh, that's a different question. It's a return on investment. Uh-huh. It, it's a return on investment. It, it, it didn't make sense. It may, I, don't, I don't get angry with pro athletes taking anabolics because that's their job. Their job is to be extreme. The steroids help them recover faster, might even prevent injuries if they do it right. You know, then that kind of makes sense. I mean, uh, well, that was a, somebody asked a question and, I, and we didn't pick it. And it kind of falls into this one. So you can kind of double up on the question is, you know, do we think there's any health benefits to taking testosterone? If your testosterone is low, then yes, there is health benefits because there's health detriments from having low testosterone. But we are treating we are treating the symptom and not the cause. So although you will get benefit from taking testosterone to bring you into normal ranges, we're not addressing why you have low testosterone right. in the first place. The biggest benefit you'll get will be from addressing your why you have those hormonal issues. Yeah. And speaking, look, for men, here's the thing. Yes, men naturally start to decline in testosterone levels. But boy, does that change if you're fit, healthy, and you lift weights properly. Yeah. I mean, then your testosterone levels stay high. Well, for a long time, yeah, it'll naturally raise testosterone versus exogenous, you know, testosterone that sort of, uh, you know, you're introducing back in. I just feel like if you can squeeze as much as you can naturally, then you know, when it gets difficult and your body won't naturally produce it, yeah, then look into alternatives. You, but. I've had many, I've had many clients, uh, male clients over the age of fifty, who, you know, and I, I used to work in a. Uh, you know, the facility I owned was it catered to a higher, uh, you know, market um, in terms of, you know, like uh, uh, you know, pros- people who have, you know, lots of funds that they can, you know, spend on their health and fitness. And so people would hire trainers, they'd hire me, 
And then it wasn't a problem if I told them, hey, you should get these tests and hormones and they'd go spend money and test things, things these, you know, take a look at these things. I've had many clients over the age of 50 and even over the age of 60 who were very dedicated to fitness, very dedicated. They would lift weights. They'd do what I tell them. They ate right. They got adequate fat intake, all that stuff. They get the hormones tested and they had testosterone levels that were excellent. I mean, I had, I got a guy who I trained for a long time. He's one of the fittest people I know. He's 72 now. He got he gets tested every single year as part of his physical, and his testosterone levels are between six to seven hundred. That's crazy. This, <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool, a dude. that's yeah. a good level for a yeah, for a twenty eight year old man. Yeah, Thir- yeah. Model right there. Yeah, yeah no, that's yeah. three times me. You know, along those lines, if I could another thing, if I could go back again, and I wish I would have done this. So if you're 25 years uh, or older, I highly recommend this, especially if you have, have not dabbled with steroids, is actually find out where your your free test levels are naturally because the range is very high. And this is how like some hormone therapists are really cool and some of them are dicks. Like, And what I mean by that is like some guys, I've had both types of doctors where one guy will test me and go, oh, well, you're still close enough to the okay range that we're not going to put you on anything. But okay range to him might be 300 to 400. But what if I was somebody who most of his 25 to 30 years was uh, at the 900, you know, 700 to 900 range? Well, if I'm used to 700 and 900 and now my body's 300, even though I may still fall in kind of the normal range, that's significantly lower than what my body's used to. So understanding what your normal range is and what that feels like for you I think is a is a smart thing for you to do as a young man in your you know mid mid twenties to early thirties. If you've never done that before, I highly recommend doing that. And the sooner the better. Like the younger you have it, the closer to your prime of your testosterone levels to know what that looks like for you. So that there that way, if you do ever decide to get you know hormone replacement, you have an idea of what what feels good and healthy and normal for you and what that range is, so you can uh, uh, actually and, and too much too much might not be good either. Yeah, I mean, right, right. I remember what it was like when I was at my peak testosterone levels, you know, right after right in my late teens, and I don't know if I would want that much testosterone in my system. I mean, <laughs> uh, could you? I mean, you remember what that was like? Oh I mean, yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. Those walking boners. Yeah, that's that was kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, everywhere to be. So, yeah. uh, go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. It is our YouTube channel. We post videos on exercises. We post videos on debates, like should you focus on muscle or should you focus on the movement or how to do fasting properly or undulating your calories. Like these are all topics that we cover on our YouTube cha- channel, and it's a new video every single day. So go there and subscribe. That's what you got to do. Also. Uh, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on episodes like this one, go to Instagram and ask them on our page, Mind Pump Media. We also have personal Instagram pages that you can check out. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. And Doug, the producer, is Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.